For too many years, families of children with devastating illnesses have felt helpless as they watched their child suffer. Today, they're taking matters into their own hands and finally finding relief treating their child with cannabis. This is One Family's Story. Hi, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Love Love and Cannabis. Cannabis. I am Nina. I'm Osiris. And we are the proud parents of Aiden. Hey, everyone. This episode is just me (laughs) without Osiris. It's a little strange without him being here. But I'm here to kind of talk on my perspective, being a cannabis mom and kind of talk about my feelings and what I went through having a child with a very severe seizure disorder. So listening to Osiris's episode, you know, as a man, being a black man, for him to really, so to speak, really speak about his feelings and to kind of really say his perspective was pretty moving. And of course I cried because sometimes when you are married, you always don't know what your partner is feeling, especially during hard times. And sometimes you may think that, are they even feeling what you're feeling or is this just you going through it alone? So it was really nice to hear what he was going through. He did a great job. So when, you know, just in general, when Aiden having epilepsy and having delays, particularly in his speech, as a mom, being that I carried him, I always, and still go through this, I feel like I did something wrong. Like, this is like my fault. You know, maybe if I took a better prenatal vitamin or took a little bit more fish oil or that this wouldn't happen or maybe if I ate more calories or I just like so many different things, you know, and I'm still dealing with that. Sometimes I blame myself for this is that if I did something differently, then his outcome would be different. You know, I live in Harlem. So sometimes I think, oh, living in inner city with the pollution, that could have been a trigger. Maybe, maybe not. I'm still dealing with this. You know, just, just I worked in a hospital at the time when he was, um, when I was pregnant. And I said, you know, hospitals are a pretty, you know, in terms of germs and bacteria and just like sanitary area. It's not really that clean. So I'm like, I say to my, sometimes I say to myself, if I ever get pregnant again, I'm moving out of Harlem and I will never work at a hospital pregnant again. You know, it's just like all these things that go through my head, blaming myself for his condition. You know, because I see, say we go to the playground or I see him in school and, I, you know, Aiden does know that he's different from kids his age particularly in his speech. So he he feels it, you know, he sees it, and that breaks my heart, of course. And to think that is something that I did or didn't do, you know, it really hurts. It does, you know, that if I did something differently, that maybe he wouldn't have these delays and would feel very comfortable with his peers. Because right now he knows that his speech is not in language, is not the same as the six-year-olds in his class or, you know, six-year-olds that he he plays with in the playground. So what he does is that he just becomes silent. He'll, he'll gesture or he'll laugh with them or do nonverbal communication, but he wouldn't talk like the way he'll talk to me or his father. And I'm like, why, you know? So that definitely takes a toll on me to think that, you know, if I did anything different, that maybe he would feel more comfortable around his peers. And I know deep down, you know, maybe it was, I could have done everything perfectly and the outcome would have been the same. You know, you know, the story of the mom that drank and smoke throughout their whole pregnancy and the baby's perfectly normal, no delays, you know, grow up to be perfectly healthy. And 
the mother was, you know, not as mindful during the pregnancy. You know, I'm saying this too, because I know I, I can't be the only one out there thinking this, you know, even if your child has like any type of childhood illness, I'm sure moms probably think, you know, if I did something differently during the bearing years, then that time maybe the outcome would have been different. I don't know. You know, I go back and forth with this all the time. But that being said, you know, I am very grateful because I know things could have been worse when it comes to um, Aiden. So Aiden right now, um, tomorrow he's starting kindergarten for the second time. (laughs) So that was another thing. So he's going to kindergarten and he's doing it again. We were very proud of him the first year in kindergarten. Um, But we still think, and his teachers think, that there are some things that he needs to fine-tune and really master for him to go to first grade. And I'm really happy about that. You know, aid and disability is not as severe as most kids. So he's in a classroom that has a mix of kids with disabilities and kids who are typically developing. They call that ICT. It's called Integrated Co-Teaching pretty popular in New York City DOE. And, you know, he doesn't need to be in a special classroom with only specialized kids because his disability isn't that severe. So I'm pretty grateful and blessed for that. So in the days where I do feel down that, you know, maybe it was my fault, I do realize that, you know, I'm blessed for him not to be as severe as other kids. That being said, when it comes to our child and his disability, just to never give up and never take maybe what a school psychologist or the doctor says about your child. There's always hope. And also that's what the CBD has kind of give us hope because we see so many gains the daily that that is really amazing. For example, for Aiden, with a child that had so many seizures, particularly in when he was two and three years old, you wouldn't think that he'll be doing what he's doing. And me and Osiris, like, we never give up. And we we do not let other people teach Aiden only. So, for example, his teachers, yeah, he's in school. But the, we're always researching things for him to help him learn. We never give up on him. And we never say, oh, he's with his teachers. They'll teach him. He's with his OT. He'll teach him. No, we are his first teachers. So we we take total, total responsibility for the education. So when he was in kindergarten, when he got to kindergarten, he knew most of his like capital letters, but they were in, they were introducing sounds. From a young age, I realized that Aiden learned through movement. So I spoke to other speech therapists. And there was a program that incorporated movement with letter sounds. Just instinctively, like, I knew this was going to be a great program for Aiden. So I started teaching him his letter sounds through movement. So if it was a, ba, there was always a movement associated with the sound. And let me tell you, he picked up all his sounds very quickly and mastered them very quickly. And I did it through repetition, constant, constant repetition in the bathroom, in a taxi cab. I know kids with disabilities need a lot of repetition, more than they, than he would get in school. So I never get it. Was, I was exhausting for me, but I knew he needed that. And I didn't want, I knew the teachers wouldn't be able to provide him with this one-on-one that he needed. So I made sure that he got everything. So everything that he's learning was double reinforced at home. He needed Osiris to be there for things like the math. He was there. So we would never give up on him. And they were, we were always researching on new techniques for Aiden because we're not taking his diagnosis as the end all, we always gotta. We always have hope. 
that things can get a little better and better and better and better. Particularly in a child when their brain is still developing. So, you know, we have, I do still have my rough days where, yeah, I want to cry and why me? <laughs> why us? You know, you know, you get envious of other, you know, I'm only human. So you get kind of envious, like, wow, she has a healthy child, no issues. And my child has this. I have to worry about this. I have to worry about that. I can't go out in the sun. I can't do certain things. I mean, it's just normal. And I, I do have those days. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. But God always gives me these little moments of of joy. You know, the good days that we have with him. And he's doing better than even some kids without epilepsy. So I have to be grateful for that as well, you know. Because no one's life is perfect. No one's No one has it all. People try to post, I have it all. It's not true. Everyone's life has struggles. Everyone's life has hardships. It's just basically how we deal with them. So with Aiden, we try our best every day to make him live his best life. (laughs) You know, some people would say, why are you taking him? Why is he riding a scooter? Why is he riding a bike? Why is he going swimming? He has epilepsy. We're like, that's not going to stop us. He has to do everything. He has to be exposed to everything. He has to live, like I said, his best life. You know, there were days where I thought, you know, maybe he wasn't going to make it. There were days that he wasn't going to live. It was like, we go through all this. But I know now, like, things are going to be okay. I just have a very sense of peace and a sense of gratitude that, you know, things are going to be okay because he made it this far. And my, my husband and I were just his biggest advocates. There are days where we do feel like we're just fighting and fighting every day. It's something that we have to advocate for him. Whether him getting his therapy, whether him getting his meds, where we're standing up for him. Every day we're fighting for something and it can be exhausting but it's all worth it. So that's my take home is that you always have to fight for your kid and never give up and just keep researching and researching until you find something. And don't be afraid to try different things with your kid that may be unconventional because you never know. It may work for them. So, I mean, that is it for what I have to say. In terms of how I feel as a mom, having a child with a severe diagnosis and disability. Yeah, some days are not hard. Some days are great. and Some days are not great. But also what Osiris taught me was that sometimes you have to take the good days and make them really, really good and enjoy them. And then there are going to be, and then just accept the bad days. Because there are going to be some bad days. But that is it for me expressing myself as a mom. (laughs) It's not easy. (laughs) It definitely isn't easy, especially if you're working full time and trying to juggle everything. But that is it. I mean, the next episode, Osiris and I are going to come back together, which is nice. Because I miss him. (laughs) So we're going to come And kind of reflect on what we each said in our individual podcast. And kind of do a compare and contrast. Because I'm sure there are some things that he's surprised that I said. And I'm surprised that he said. But all good things. So that is it for me. I'm signing off. I hope everyone is having a great week. And if not, like we always say, this is just temporary. Ciao. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Love Love and Cannabis. Cannabis. I'm Nina. I'm Osiris. And we're the proud parents of Aiden. Aiden. Be strong. And stay empowered.